Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we're going to be discussing calibration, maintenance of calibration, and also two scripts that I designed to automate calibration as far as doing the cycles. Now, many, many, many new clients are coming to me asking me about calibration, and I wanted to put together simple scripts in both Imperial and Metric so you guys could run these scripts and again calibrate your system. Now I only did this for a one inch movement. Again you could hear, see here for the x-axis one inch, x-axis negative one inch. Um, for whatever axis you're using it's completely arbitrary. You would just substitute the x for y or z or whatever axis you'd like to do. Um, and keep in mind you can always change the configuration here from one to ten inches whatever distance you'd like to do. The big thing to remember is that with a script it allows for a consistent result because it's running a cycle. And what do I mean by a cycle? A cycle very simply means that you're going to run more than one process of calibration. And that simply means that if I hit play here, watch what happens. We're going to move one inch. You can see our DROs right here. And again, we're moving right here, one inch. And then we're going to go backwards one inch after pausing five seconds. And you can see, as it starts traveling back, that would be your opportune time if you had your dial indicator set up on this side to reset it so that you'll be taking another measurement as it cycles back. It's going to pause five seconds when it returns, and then it's going to go once again in the same direction of the indicator once again if it's on the right side. This is imperative for finding accuracy. You do not want to run one cycle and call your machine accurate. I see a lot of potential clients talking about that and that is not what we're looking for. We're looking for multiple cycles. You want to stay with a minimum of five and I would say the sweet spot is ten. Let the software do the work and all you're doing here is actually just letting the tool do its job. The axis just cycles back and forth. You can see your dwell and then it's going to go reverse and you're all set to take another measurement. Now the key to this whole thing is you want to make sure, and I hit the stop button for a reason, you want to make sure if you run into an issue where your indicator moves out of alignment, and that's the big key, we want to make sure your indicator is as close to parallel as possible. However, if it moves out of alignment, you want to center it back. If you have to, naturally hit stop. You can hit your emergency stop. It really is irrelevant. You then would come over to go to zero, and you could cycle the process all over again once the access returns. The thing to keep in mind is that a machine never holds accuracy typically forever. And that could be for numerous reasons. You may bump an axis. It could be from the transmission. We might have all kinds of issues with play and wear. And these are something that you have to really account for. It's just part of maintenance to robots. The other thing to keep in mind is that you want to stay consistent in when you're setting up a calibration. What I mean by that? You come over here to Operator tab, and you're going to come down to Maintenance Hours. And you can see right here, this session's, uh, what, 8 seconds or whatever total time. You can hit Reset All. And now, when you reset all, this session, total operating time, I would watch the total operating time and give yourself a measurement that you can write down. Say after every 40 hours of use, you'll run a script. Now this script particularly is an Imperial. That does not mean I don't have one for my guys that are running uh, metric. We've got one for them too. And it's the same thing. Now again, it's completely arbitrary, but the difference here of course is 25.4 because in the metric system 25.4 millimeters equals one inch. We do have the M47 command here on the bottom to start from the first line. So all we've done is basically create a loop. And once again, it's in the metric system. So if I was to run this, because again you see G21, inside of the imperial settings that I have of units of measure right now I want to show you guys what would happen most of you already know what will happen but for the guys that are novice just getting involved watch what happens I really want you guys to see this because this is something that happens quite a bit I'll have a client or a potential client say to me I don't know what happened something just changed and it's like well watch what's going on and there it goes and then all of a sudden of course because most scripts do not have or code for that matter have the actual definition for sets units to millimeters if they forget they're in G21 it'll instantly do it so these are things to keep in mind but you can see exactly what we're doing here we will do the same process the only difference is of course we're in the metric system running it in Imperial with this particular unit of measure set in the system so again this is something you guys I think is really long overdue I should have given you this a long time ago it will definitely help many of you Another thing I want to discuss is this. We're only doing one inch of measure here, okay, at 25.4 millimeters, or if we come back over to our Imperial, 
we're still only doing one inch of measure. If you have a chassis that's between 12 to we'll say 24 inches, usually I would say two feet is probably going to be maximum. That is accurate for one inch. And what I mean to say is if you use one inch, you're going to be off slightly potentially as you go the greater distance of the chassis, but it's not going to be usually so much if you have an accurate dial indicator that's precision, preferably digital, and a really good dial indicator mount because we don't want any play in it that would shift and give you inaccuracies. You're going to find you may be off, but not much. We're never using the full size of the chassis to machine with to begin with, but it's still something to keep in mind. The smaller the increment of measure you're using for calibration, the greater the exponential value of difference you will have as far as accuracy, the larger the table is. So think about what I just said there. Let's change the example. Let's say the table is 48 inches. Okay, and this is usually a typical four by eight. I get guys that say this, and eight foot's even more extreme, but let's say four foot. At a four foot table at 48 inches, if you're using a one inch measuring instrument, that means that the potential of that instrument to take that calibration, let's say you get within, we'll say three thousandths at one inch of measure. That three thousandths increment of variance is going to be multiplied by 48 by the time you go towards the end of the table. And I know many of you are going to say, Vin, I'm not going to use that full length of the table. And you'd be right. But for the difference of what you are going to use, let's say you use 40 inches of 48 for a particular job, you got to multiply three thousands times, you know, 40 inches. So break that down. You know, it's a, it really exponentially goes up. That's where my AccuScale tool was designed for calibrating larger machines because this is something never discussed and most guys don't figure it out until they've actually run a calibration. So think in terms of this, um, if we have to use a tool that's only measuring an inch, your differential becomes much greater. If we're using a tool that can measure up to 24 inches, that changes everything because now we've gotten now a 600 millimeter length of measure that we can do on a four foot chassis, let's say, and you could take that measurement and just slide the scale down. You're not accurate now to one inch, you're accurate at 24 inches. That changes dramatically because then we're going to be basically 23 times greater in accuracy than we were with one inch. So again, think about that. It's tremendous on a larger scale table. And again, I'm going to tell you right now, the guys dealing with large projects, this is a tool that is imperative. And you'll find that more and more as you work with larger scale machines. I cannot tell you how many times, and I still get messages at least four times a week, on guys asking me questions on larger chassis of how come their calibration is good you know, within maybe 10 inches. But as soon as they go past 10 inches, something's off. They think it's their transmission. They think all kinds of things. And it usually relies in the fact that it's either the calibration of how it's being done or there could be something in the transmission. It could be something with bearings. It could be tolerances that differ over the length of the chassis. There's so many variables. We would, it would take you know, a scientist to go through them all. But the main thing is, is that we use a tool that goes past that one-inch capacity when we're dealing with much larger tables. So again, always keep that in mind. As far as these scripts, I'm making them available to you guys. Just message me. And when I say message, that means send me an email. There's no way I can link these to them. I don't have a server. So if you send me an email, I'll forward you whatever script you request, and you'll be all set. I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope for my guys that are novice just getting involved, and even my seasoned guys, they really try using this method, and they'll see a tremendous difference on what they're doing. The main thing to keep in mind is be careful of videos telling you to use calipers and rulers. You need a dial indicator, preferably uh, accurate. You know, The more accurate, the better, but we'll say five ten thousandths of an inch is usually going to be your most accurate, and again, we'll get your accuracy on your machine where it needs to be. So if this video has been helpful, please like and subscribe. I really do appreciate the thumbs up. Channel's growing tremendously. Thank you all for your support. Take care.